Joining me today is financial trader David Paul. Thanks so much for joining us. For somebody that may not have heard of you, how would you explain yourself to our viewers? How would you like to introduce that? Okay, well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I am a financial trader. I started to trade markets purely by accident. In fact, uh, I went uh, in 1981, I went from London here uh, to South Africa to play rugby, to play professional rugby. And uh, uh, I was billeted into an office with an old fellow who started life in Cornwall, but had been in Africa for a very long time. And uh, every day he did a very strange thing. He would walk to the corner of the office and he would pick up uh, a drawing. Uh, I thought it was an engineering drawing at the time, but in fact, he would put this onto his uh, uh, drawing board and out of the paper, the Rand Daily Mail, uh, during the course of the morning, he would update 40 or 50 shares that he was following by hand. Uh, the charts were a work of art because although he was a metallurgist at that stage, he started life as a draftsman and his uh, charts were absolutely pristine. Uh, he would, uh, in fact, by hand, uh, from the newspaper, uh, plot the high of the day, the low of the day, the closing price. At that stage, stock markets of the world didn't report the opening price and the volume traded. And from that, he was making decisions in the stock market using uh, a tattered old book uh, called uh, Technical Analysis of Stock Trends, written by two guys called Edwards and McGee in 1948. And it's still the Bible of technical analysis and old-fashioned charting. Uh, I watched him uh, in 1981. The only thing I was interested in was chasing a rugby ball. Uh, but I watched him. I saved up some money. And uh, on October 1982, I put on my first trade. Uh, and they say that if your dad takes you fishing and you catch a fish the first morning, well, you fish for the rest of your days. Well, uh, it was a winning trade. It was in a company you probably know, South African breweries. Yeah. Uh, and InBev these days. Uh, and uh, uh, I traded while I worked uh, for De Beers in South Africa from 1982 to 1988. And in April 1988, I cut the corporate umbilical cord for good, and I've been trading on my own ever since. I've had spells at the institutional level uh, over the years, but uh, it doesn't suit me. I'm happier trading on my own. Uh, and that's largely because some days there's nothing to do. For example, uh, we've got uh, Yellen speaking and uh, testifying today and tomorrow. Prior to that, markets are dead. If you work at the institutional level, you've got to sit there and sit there and sit there. If you're trading flow and if you're a market maker, that's great because there's always something to do. You can make the spread all day. But if you're a proprietary trader, there are times where there's just nothing happening and I'm happier in the gym. <laughs> Now, on your CV, it says that you have a doctorate in mechanical engineering. Have, have your studies helped with your trading? Uh, uh, yes, I suppose they have. Uh, I have a PhD in uh, mechanical engineering. Uh, I think in trading, you need two things. You need information and you need self-awareness. And certainly, my background uh, as an engineer has helped uh, put those information channels into place. I think that when that's in place, it becomes quite a small part of the puzzle and self-awareness is everything. And uh, there's an awful lot of trading psychologists around these days. In fact, I think there's probably more trading psychologists than there are traders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it's really, really important uh, that you get those two little facets in place, uh, information and self-awareness. So it has certainly helped in the first so we heard about who was your inspiration to start trading, but how did you actually start to trade? What, 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 was, what was your first trade and, and how did it continue? Well, uh, the first trade was, uh, I've always been and started off uh, as a technical trader because that uh, fellow that I mentioned uh, was a chartist. So uh, I've always been a technical trader. Most people, when they start trading, they, they start trading with the fundamentals and then they move to the technicals. Well, in fact, I've done it the other way around. I started with the technicals and, and now I've embraced quite a few fundamentals, especially in, in stock trading uh, over the last few years. Uh, so. Uh, I look for trends. Uh, my definition of technical analysis in the stock market or any market is that it's a study of trends and turning points. So uh, I look for a trend and then I look for an elegant entry into that trend uh, using uh, some form of, of technical pattern. This can be a breakout pattern, very simple patterns like triangles, ascending triangles, falling wedges, etc or more complicated uh, patterns which are based on the Fibonacci sequence. And I've developed a, a quite a, 
uh, an understanding of the Fibonacci patterns to get yourself into a trend at a really good place. Uh, I've also studied the work of a fellow called Richard Wyckoff. Uh, and yesterday, in fact, in the euro dollar, there was a classic Wyckoff upspring on a 30-minute chart, which in fact uh, caused, uh, precipitated the euro to fall quite strongly for the rest of the day. Uh, I think that you could make a living on Wyckoff up thrusts and springs, but the problem with them, like any other single technical pattern, is that they come like London taxis. You get six of them at once, and then you don't see them for a fortnight, and you would get bored if you only traded the one. So I'm looking to define a trend, uh, and then I want to try and buy into that trend at an elegant uh, place. Uh, I said that there's three rules in trading. I like to fade the short-term trend in the direction of the long-term trend. Uh, and uh, secondly, I like to put my entries where the masses put their stops. Okay. And thirdly, is that when I'm right, I want to add to winners. I want to be bigger when I'm right than I am when I'm wrong. So, uh, and if there's one secret to making lots and lots and lots and lots of money in markets, is that you've got to have the strength to add to your winners. Now, most people, in fact, don't do that. And in fact, most people, in fact, add to their losers. And they your style of trading obviously um, requires application, dedication. Do you think rugby was an influence on, on that at all? I think that you can build discipline, and it is my belief, therefore it's true for me, uh, that you can build discipline in any uh, field that you uh, want to sort of work at. It takes repetition. Uh, and. Uh, I go to the gym every day. I have absolutely no idea why I go to the gym every day at 61, but nevertheless, it doesn't take any discipline for me to go to the gym every single day. And the great paradox, of course, is that when you've got discipline, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> so it just happens. Uh, and I, I frequently see at my gym in Notting Hill, there's a revolving door, and I frequently see people coming in at one side and halfway through the journey on the revolving door where they change their minds and they leave again. <laughs> so uh, there is a sort of, a, uh, you can build discipline relatively easily and in some of the training courses I've done over the years, uh, we have a discipline building exercise, which is all about gritting your teeth and following a trading system for about 30 trades. It takes about 30 trades to instill that discipline. So certainly my rugby has helped me. Uh, and uh, I'm reasonably disciplined in most things. There are certainly things that I need to work on, that's for sure. Uh, but I firmly believe that anybody can develop uh, the discipline to be a consistently winning trader, but very few do. Which areas would you say people need to be disciplined in to be a great trader? Uh, I think that the one thing that I see more than anything else is people jumping from trading system to trading system. So uh, they start off uh, on a Monday morning being a trend follower and they have one bad trade and then they decide the trend following is not a good idea. Uh, let's actually scalp a five minute chart and they have a go at that. That didn't work either. And they're continually optimizing to what worked well yesterday. So they jump uh, from system to system to system more often than I change my socks, which I may <laughs> add is twice a day at the gym. Okay. So, uh, uh, and Getting over that is a major hurdle. Uh, clearly, losses are a massive thing. Uh, and uh, psychologists have done an awful lot of work on uh, how to handle losses. But uh, nevertheless, getting rid of it, I know it's, I know it's a cliche, it's said by every trader, but uh, getting rid of your uh, losses fairly quickly. And then adding to your winners. In trading, you've got to do, to make money, you've got to do what the average person can't do. And the average person, in fact, struggles to cut a loss. And the average person, in fact, struggles to add to winners. So they buy a share at £10, the share goes to £10.50, they snap at the 50p profit. They buy a share at £10, the darn thing goes to 9 mm, it's going to turn. Give it another tick. And then it goes to 8 and then it goes to 7 and then they get this thing in the back of their mind, hey, we can get two for the price of one here. So they buy some more at 7 and of course the darn thing falls to 5 <laughs> and uh, they're finished. Uh, completely. Uh, there's two types of capital. One is your loot 
and secondly is your emotional capital. And if you make a mistake like that, that can leave an enormous amount of psychological damage. It sits in your stomach here. It's like having three pints of Guinness at lunchtime. It just sits there, it's heavy, and it takes an awful long time to get rid of that. Time's a natural healer, of course, and you'll find that people who make a mistake like that will do nothing for six months. And then six months later, the pain has sort of gone away and they'll have another go.